Hello! So you've made the leap and commitment and decided to leave California and move to Austin. Yay, congratulations! So many of the clients that I work with are just like you and they are relocating to Austin from different parts of California. I always share the information that I hear with my new clients from my past clients, but it's always secondhand information. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a video with some folks who actually made the move themselves from California to Austin. So we're going to talk with two of my past clients who actually made the move from California to Austin themselves. I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor. We've got a packed video for you today, so make sure to watch all the way through. Also, if this is your first time on my channel and you wanna stay updated on Austin's housing market, make sure to click subscribe and the notification button so you get notified and you can be the first to know what is going on with Austin's housing market. Are you ready? Let's go. We've got so much to share with you. So we're here today with Steph and Joe, who were, well, I guess you guys have bought and sold homes for me. Like we've done like three transactions together. That's uh, right. Four. Four? Yeah. Four transactions four together <laughs> over the last, what is it? Four years? Five years? Uh, 2018. Yeah. So tell me, tell me and tell us a little bit about you guys, who you are, about your family. Yeah. So I'm Stephanie and this is my fiance, Joe. We've been together for about 13 years. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> And we have two beautiful girls, Eliana and Eva. One is, Eliana is five and Eva is four. Um, and we have a mixed dog, Whiskey. Remember and, Whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> originally from the Bay Area. Yeah, now live in Austin, have been here for about four years now since we first met Daphne. Yeah. I think you said it all, right? It's, um, I mean, that recaps yeah, your guys. I think that's, yeah, who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So before talking to Steph and Joe, I set up a list of questions that I think would be really helpful, especially if you are relocating to Austin from California, because they have done it. They've actually been back and forth from California like twice now because of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of? Okay. So we're going to go over this list of questions. They're going to answer as best and as honestly as they can. If you guys relate to any of this or you have any more questions, please leave a comment at the bottom. I'd be more than happy to do a follow-up video to answer more of your questions after this one. So let's get started. Question one, what brought you guys to Austin originally? Yeah, I think initially we were wanting something different. Um, in the Bay Area, it felt like everyone was just focused on climbing their career ladders. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted a slower pace. Um, when we had two girls, that kind of sparked us looking at places outside of the Bay Area. Um, and Austin is what kind of popped up on our list as city number one mm -hmm. um, to go explore. Yeah, you know, we just heard a lot of great things um, about the culture, just the area in general within Texas. And I think that's what really attracted us. I remember in one of our initial conversations, you guys had mentioned having better quality of life and basically your dollar goes further in Texas and in Austin and you have higher quality of life. Like, just tell me what that's been like for you guys. Yeah, I think when we think about our time in the Bay Area, it felt that a large portion of our paycheck, like everyone else, was going towards our mortgage. Um, and it was also tough just to enter the real estate market. Um, we knew that we wanted to build our wealth and leave something behind for our kids through real estate. And we just felt it was unattainable in the Bay Area. Well, I also just heard about the great family atmosphere, wherever you go, you know, kids are welcome, dogs are welcome, and we felt that a lot of the areas or establishments in the Bay Area did not really feel family welcome. Um, I've heard that a lot, actually. You're not the first people to say that, that it feels, sorry if my wording is off, but like a little bit stark. And it's very like it's it, parts of it can be very corporate and just like you said it's about moving up in your career it's not really about the overall human well-being and like the whole family unit it's just like work 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 move push push and that's it and then you die <laughs> right i don't know am yeah. i wrong you can tell me if i'm wrong <laughs> no that's that's pretty much what i felt like well yeah. i came from my career was a little bit more lax but I feel like once you're in that tech industry mm -hmm. especially over there they don't really have that um, setting the boundaries like that That's especially pre-pandemic so question number two what were some things that you guys heard about Austin before moving here well one that was very family friendly which is something we were looking for um, the main thing that I heard was that it was or it is this bubble within Texas that mm -hmm. wasn't really like any other major city. 
Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. Um, and that was something that was very interesting to us, being from California. Um, yeah. yeah, for me it was um, kind of my touch into Austin was more from my professional landscape. Austin was part of a lot of location strategies for a lot of the tech companies in mm -hmm. the Silicon Valley. Um, and we knew that it was right for growth. We didn't understand the, the qualitative aspects behind that growth. We only saw the numbers. Um, and we just knew that it was potentially going to become a boom town of some sort. So I guess the follow up question to what you both said is what you heard about Austin, were those things true? As for the bubble part, I think it right. is. We've traveled to Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, and then made, a, made our way back to California um, via a road trip. Yeah. And it is totally different yeah. from those other it's very different. <laughs> very different. It's very different. Um, you no know, one of my first impressions here was, oh, it's not this huge desert that I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But then when you're on the 10 going towards El Paso, so going west, mm -hmm. that is what The I stereotype, thought, right? That is what I thought yeah. um, Austin would be like, and it's totally not. Yeah. So um, I do agree, it, it is a bubble. Yeah, and then as far as just the growth position there, um, I'd say it, it, it was true, but mm -hmm. surprisingly the growth occurred, I, I would say, faster than I initially anticipated. Really? Okay. Because um, I think in year one, we saw steady growth. And then years two, three, and four, it just seemed to be an explosion. What are you talking about growth? Like, uh, career? I'm talking about just the proliferation of tech companies moving over oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then also on the real estate side. Yeah. Um, it became harder and harder uh, to acquire properties, yeah. right? And we saw that when we go to open listings together, just how many more people were here. Um, so I'd say the growth really surprised me in terms of how fast it happened yeah. over the past couple of years. I think, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, you're right. As far as um, like the tech companies that are moving here, I've been here for, I think, 12 years. And since I've been here, it's just, I feel like that's kind of the constant pace that we've had. And I think the last couple of years have definitely been even faster with Apple opening its new campus. Um, Oracle came in and I want to say it was 2015. 15, 16, and then they really exploded from there. And then of course, Tesla now. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think the last couple of years have been a little bit faster than they normally are. Question 3.5 slash four. What was the biggest shock for you guys moving to Austin? For me, it was the vast green space. Like I said before, I thought it was desert completely yeah. like tumbleweeds, just, you know, old yeah. saloon type, but it's, <laughs> it's really beautiful here. Which uh, we've established does exist in Texas. You can definitely does, get a saloon yeah. experience if you want, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Austin specifically, um, very lush, very beautiful, especially in certain places. Um, and that was very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say the thing that surprised me most about Austin, um, was the people and culture. Yeah. Um, given that there was a lot of tech talent coming over. You would naturally assume that you'd have tech behavior out here um, in terms of just being fast paced. And I was quite shocked by how folks seem to have a slower pace here. Yeah. Um, centered around the family, um, centered around just quality time outside of work. Mm -hmm. And that for me was the most shocking thing. Do you feel, and I've heard this a lot from other Californians too, do you feel like people's interest in when they're talking to it, it's like more genuine and it goes a little bit deeper than just what do you do for, for work? Yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah. We were, we're so used to initiating conversations centered around the career. Um, with a handful of folks we met off the bat, a lot of the conversations were just around us as a human being, like mm -hmm. things we were interested in, and we rarely talked about work or our professional lives. No, not that you can't, yeah. but I think people are so friendly here and, I have to say, in all the years that I've been living here, though Austin has changed tremendously, I feel like the core of the culture of like humans caring about other humans and being generally interested and wanting to be friends, that has not changed, which is beautiful. Let's, let's hold on to that forever. Um, and it, it also seems like folks here are looking to build community, and that's very different from where we're from. Um, so it was very easy to actually establish like a friendship network out here yeah. and just build an overall circle that we trust. So. That's great.
No, and that's beautiful. And I think that's something that really needs to be emphasized that people really need to hear more about in Austin uh, because it is very unique. Question number five. What are some things about Austin that remind you of where you came from? There's a lot of neighborhoods that are very similar, I feel like, in just overall feel mm -hmm. to the ones we grew up with in the Bay Area um, when we were touring homes the first time. Anytime we would go to a new place, I would compare it to somewhere like, oh, this feels like Walnut Creek, mm -hmm. Hayward. Dublin. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, just overall feels of certain neighborhoods, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly the same. Of course, they're yeah. totally different, but I think just that similarity kind of felt like home. Maybe I shouldn't say home. California. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So when Steph and Joe first bought their, their first home in Austin, it was in the Bee Cave slash Westlake-ish area. What would you compare that neighborhood to in California? Just like out of curiosity. Yeah, I would say it's very similar to Dublin, California, okay. um, in terms of it having lots of space, mm -hmm. open space. The homes are situated in a way that you're pretty far from your neighbor. Um, and it reminds me of Dublin before it exploded, um, before tech had come in and set up headquarters there. Okay. Um, and that's what VK reminded me of. Um, also, the location of Dublin, and I would also say San Ramon in the Bay mm -hmm. Area, was almost a similar distance from the main center of the Bay, of Bay Area, like Oakland or California. Mm -hmm. Bee Cave is that similar, maybe 25, 30 minutes out to the downtown. So it was very, Suburban. it was out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it is. It yeah. is. And Bee Cave is it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Bee Cave definitely is bougie, and that's absolutely okay to say. And people know that. But yeah, I mean, it is kind of its own thing. It doesn't feel like Austin proper, like if you go to the South Congress area, mm -hmm. it's completely different than downtown or like a central Austin neighborhood. Yeah, for sure. Combined with Lakeway, especially. Absolutely. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. a totally different vibe. Totally. Although, um, also very nice and pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was just right for us yeah. at the time. Yeah. And, you know, we found out a couple years later, yeah. you know, this wasn't really where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a good experience because it was a very quaint neighborhood yeah. that we moved into. It turned out to be a really great starting point for you yeah. because they originally got their home in 2018, late 2018. Mm -hmm. You hung on to it for a couple years and you had some great equity and that allowed you to make other really smart investments. So thanks, Bee Cave. <laughs> <laughs> Question number six. What is something that no one talks about in Austin that you think they should know? I'd say just comparing to where we came from in the Bay Area. Uh, the public transportation and just city infrastructure isn't quite there yet. Where we're from, we're used to being able to take BART to get in and out of, you know, major towns. What's what's that? Uh, so, it's pretty much our train system. Oh, okay, okay. Area rapid transit. Oh. Um, so there's nothing yet comparable <laughs> no. to that here. No. They do have like a, tr I don't know what it's called, a tram. The metro rail, yeah. I think is what yeah, it's called. But it's like a straight line up and down. It, it won't really get you anywhere important. I take that back. It takes you downtown. So if you, honestly, if you live in Leander or Cedar Park and you work downtown, it's great. But literally anywhere else going east or west, forget it. It's, and it stops running after midnight. So if you want to go out, you have to be back on it. I heard they're working on it though. So I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, no, you're right. Our public transportation is basically non-existent. I would also say um, <laughs> the weather has been unpredictable. No. Moving here, I didn't really expect anything too crazy. Yeah. The heat, obviously, um, yeah. but in the past few years with the recent tornadoes and snowstorms, yeah. which isn't too much, but it was just a surprise when it happened for It was a surprise for everybody. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. No, and the tornado she's talking about, let me just talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, in spring of 2022, we had a tornado. We don't typically have tornadoes in the Austin area. That's more Dallas. Um, but you're right, it hit down in Round Rock. But you're right, I mean, it was just like a handful of streets that that tornado touched down on. And it was it was actually pretty devastating for that little pocket of Round Rock. Uh, it did, we did get some wind damage from that in other parts of Austin as well, but it was particularly that pocket. And then the snowstorms that we had in early 21 and 22, we were not ready at all. And that was pretty devastating for a lot of people too. 
Does it happen? Really hardly ever in Texas, much less Austin. But yeah, I mean, you never know. It can be very unpredictable. So anything else that you think people don't talk about and they should know about Austin? I think crazy? similar in the, in the LA and the Bay Area, it was easy to just cut people off while they were exiting. Out here, that's heavily frowned upon. Kind of you get in line and be courteous. And that took us a while to get used to after yeah. being honked at so many yeah. times. <laughs> but people are still pretty bad drivers here though. Like they're not, I wouldn't say they're good. I, com, no. no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, just the driving lanes that you're not really used to, the turnaround lanes where you have to be in the far left to make yeah. a U-turn um, on one of the major streets like Research Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's gonna resonate with anyone, but yeah. Um, and then a lot of the exits are miles apart too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you miss your exit, sometimes you have to keep driving another 10 to 15 minutes to take yeah. the next one and make a U-turn. It's, it's a lot because we have so much land. Yeah. And that took me a really long time to get used to as well. What is, uh, what is something that uh, people don't talk about that they should know? There's a lot of events, yeah. And it's just not music. But the whole world is yeah. music and all these other events too. And now that it's the holidays. So Circuit of the Americas has various events throughout the year yeah. and now um, during the holidays they're having this thing called peppermint parkway where you could drive <laughs> um and see the grinch in real life which was Ooh. very maybe it was memorable for memorable our for our memorable kids. did they like it or were they scared by it they were scared okay <laughs> but older kids would probably love it okay um, and they have a little festival there too but i've oh. heard of many music festivals there and mm -hmm. just other things throughout the year yeah they always have shows uh they there's always concerts at the circuit of the americas which is our formula one track in case you didn't know uh moody theater frank Irwin center but that's not really a novelty uh but yeah there's there's literally always something happening yeah. So those are basically all the questions that I had. Uh, I do want to keep hearing about your guys' experience though and what else you have to share with with our subscribers and anybody else who might be moving from California. Well, coming from the Bay Area, I think we were very used to being close to the beach and a few hour drive to the snow. Um, I'll say because we're in Austin and Texas in the middle of everywhere, you can drive I don't know, six hours to the beach, and the snow is probably, you know, just a short trip. Just a short trip. Yeah. <laughs> Not a short trip. Like 10 uh, hours. <laughs> yeah. It's a road trip to the snow, and you still have those things available to you. You just mm -hmm. got to take a little bit more time to get there. And also, you can really fly to either coast <laughs> yeah. more easily than you could have being on California. Obviously, That's true. We're closer to the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. It's it, We also, because we are a hub, I think we have, I feel like flights are quick, and it's also pretty affordable. I mean, not that everyone wants to go to Vegas, but to get to Vegas from Austin, it's like hundred bucks, maybe 150 round trip sometimes to go to California. I haven't been to California in a long time, but it's not super expensive or a super long flight either. Yeah. And I'd say the time zone is pretty convenient as well. Um, cause if you're hopping on a short flight to either coast, you don't have to deal with major jet lag. That's true. Being three hours yeah. time difference. So that's it's true. That's pretty convenient. Yeah. If you guys could redo your move to Austin, what do you wish you would have known or done differently? What we what we would have done differently mm -hmm. if we had known right from the beginning. Oh, I we... always say this to yeah. my friends. I would have come here earlier, just before the explosion of growth. Adding on to that, um, I think our daughter has a great education. She's currently in kindergarten and she loves her friends, loves her teacher, and um, the school is just is great overall and it's only around the corner from our house public school public, public school, school. that's yes. great and um we initially thought we'd have to enroll her in a private school just being used to just the lower quality i'd say public schools from where we're from mm -hmm. um and we're very happy with okay. where she's at in terms of just the teacher to student ratio the quality of her education um and that it's free yeah relatively well, I mean, property taxes yeah yeah so I work at UT Austin mm -hmm. and they have a great child development center mm -hmm. and that's where our youngest goes currently oh. um, and she loves it and we love the teachers as well. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's really good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I, I personally learned a lot from what Joe and Steph had to say. I hope you guys did. And like I said earlier, if you have questions or comments or ideas about other things you'd like to know about moving to Austin from 
California or another state, please leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. This is a bonus. If you've watched this video all the way through the end, you get a treat. What has your experience here been with the food and the food culture in Austin? So being from the Bay Area, um, I think we had so much selection. Mm -hmm. And I'll say what they do really well here, obviously barbecue mm -hmm. and tacos. That is uncomparable to anything we had mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. Um, what I would love to see more of is kind of the Asian yeah. food um, flourish. There has been a lot of, I think, restaurants that have popped up recently and that are highly rated. Um, and they're great. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's I not mean, the it's same. not the same. California has really great Asian restaurants. Yeah. And we have a few, but we have a lot of Tex-Mex and Mexican food here. <laughs> I think those are great. They are. No, yeah, they are really good. They're done really very good. well. But yeah. it would, that was one of the things I noticed, too, when I first moved here. And again, this was like 12 years ago. I, I remember calling my mom and telling her, there's no Asian food here. Um, and there is more now, which is nice. But it's we need more. Yeah. <laughs> there's been a lot popping up. And I'll say yeah. we have our go-to places near mm -hmm. our home. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that was lacking, I think, in the BK Lakeway area yeah. was that type of cuisine. Definitely. And we would have to drive 40 minutes, 40 minutes. you know, to um, North Austin, where yeah. we live now. Yeah. And now it's more abundant and we have our go-to places that are also very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think like the BK area, it's more it's more common to see like the Tex-Mex type of food and then kind of the bigger box restaurants, mm -hmm. which are nice. But yeah, if you want something that's like more like ethnic or like Ma and Pa, like a small business, yeah, you kind of have to go a little further out or back into the city for that. So I appreciate the honest feedback. That's actually really helpful. <laughs> now you guys know that insider information. That was a lot of information. Thank you so much for watching. If you're thinking about relocating to Austin or thinking about buying or selling a home here, you can always reach out. You can call, text, email, send me a message on Instagram, or you can even schedule a Zoom call directly with me. Just check out the description at the bottom to get it set up. I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor. Thanks so much. Till next time.